Hello and welcome to Beginning Cooks. Today I'm going to be talking about spaghetti diagrams, mapping the chaos that is the workplace. You might be asking at this point, spaghetti? Well, much like the popular pasta, spaghetti diagrams look like many long strings of nonsense. But that's the whole point. A spaghetti diagram's main purpose is to document the movement of workers. Generally, if the roles are not well defined, or if supervision is not that strict, the move paths of the workers will be quite sporadic and complicated, thus drawing attention to the lack of routine. Like many things in industrial engineering, if you don't have a set standard operating procedure for your employees, it might seem obvious that they'll move around a little bit, and a lot of times they move around to help each other out, which is good in nature. It's also obvious that they don't have good supervision, they'll move around all nonsensical. But it is typically an issue that doesn't get a lot of focus until you make the spaghetti diagram. The purpose of the spaghetti diagram, as I mentioned earlier, is to draw attention to insanity that might have been covered up before. And when I say insanity, I just mean processing insanity, all sorts of waste that is hidden. It can help identify bottlenecks that you didn't realize were bottlenecks and increase efficiency. You might be asking, aren't bottlenecks obvious? Traditional ones, yes, but if you have one operator whose job takes the longest, but they typically have other employees running around to help them, it can lower their processing time and make it look like they are not the bottleneck. A spaghetti diagram will help illustrate all this movement. And that really is the main purpose of a spaghetti diagram. You can say first and foremost, it draws intention to all the movement, but ultimately, with a spaghetti diagram, you seek to restrict that movement, which is great for production, because movement is one of the seven deadly wastes. I'll end on some tips for how to make a spaghetti diagram. Don't focus much on the equipment or the layout of the area. That's not important. Spaghetti diagrams focus primarily on people and how they move. Now, if a machine is important because a lot of the movement involves that machine or is centered around a machine, fine, mark it. But don't worry about putting too much detail in. This isn't a plant layout or a machine diagram. This is all about the movement of people. When you begin your spaghetti diagram, follow the movement of each operator, each employee, and keep the line flowing in a singular path. So don't make every movement of theirs an individual line. It should flow from beginning to end like a piece of spaghetti. It's also helpful to separate different employees by color so you can tell them apart or by line style. You know, you can make one zigzaggy, one straight, one dotted, exactly. Now for great effect, you can note the time on the diagram. So you can say, look at all this movement that was done in 10 minutes or one hour or four hours. That really helps get the point across. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you now understand what a spaghetti diagram is, how to make one, and what the practical purposes are. If you like this video, please subscribe. Recently, I've been doing less engineering videos just because I've been focusing on my beginning cooks channel more, but I do have a passion for making these engineering videos, so I will continue to make them going forward into the future. Have a great day.